Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Sign Lens, we're gonna talk about placing a softbox. Two people will set a softbox down and it will look much different for both of them. Why is that? Because simple little things create a much different look with a softbox. So let's talk about those things, how to finesse a softbox so it will give you exactly the image that you're after. Number one, why should I place my softbox horizontal or vertical? Interestingly enough, a softbox has a round area of coverage, and it doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or vertical, it's the same area of coverage. You can look at our uh, lesson on softboxes. I show you the patterns we shot on the wall. It does not change whatsoever whether the box is vertical or horizontal. What does change is what the softbox can see on the subject matter. So if you want there to be fill on the shadow side, if you want a softer image, you want your box to be horizontal, because now this side of the softbox can see the side of her face. It's going to be softer. I can move this around and I can open up the side of her face much easier. Now, if I want harder and I don't want to see her on the corner, then make it vertical and bring it back. So now my light doesn't see the side of her face anymore. The more I move this around, the more moody it's going to get because the light can't see around her. Most people just set a softbox up and they aim it straight at the subject matter and that's what it lights. It's lighting the background equally to the foreground, it's lighting her entire body. I can feather the softbox so that I can light less or more of her body. If I decide, you know what, I really want my background to be dark, I will feather this towards the light, towards my camera. And if I decide I really want that pink sweat of hers to not be so bright, then I'll feather this up. I now have gone, I'll bring this down a little bit so I can feather it up just a little more. And this is a scary place for people because they're going, well, a softbox isn't aiming at her at all. Going, you know what? I vignetted it off from the sweater and I still have a nice light on her face. With a fill card sliding in there, I can open this up and it looks very nice on her face even though I'm bouncing it up and out. Understandably, we're bouncing it into the ceiling that creates a little bit of a fill light in our uh, scenario here, but the reality is I've created a vignette on her sweater by feathering this up and feathering it towards the camera. Now, if I want the background to be brighter and still have that vignette on her sweater, then I'll just simply, I'll rotate this back towards the background and bring it forward a little bit, lighten up her face but I'm still vignetting her sweater. It's not as bright. I can probably vignette that even a little more if I want by bringing it down and up. That's now opened up my background. I mean, it's a dark background to begin with, but it's made it so it's a little brighter. And she's separating a little easier on that background now, but it's still feathering up and towards the background. That really makes quite a difference on her. I've talked about grids ever since I started doing this kind of stuff. A grid cuts down what the softbox can see. It has these squares, they're about an inch and a half or two inches deep, and so the actual face of the softbox is now cut, the angle of view for the softbox. It narrows the angle of view, makes it much narrower. So it's like putting, it's like feathering the box, but it's done for you with a grid. Automatically that grid narrows the area of coverage. It cuts it down significantly. It's much easier for me to really make sure that I don't have, I want to be able to vignette her sweater. Now there's my there's my vignette of my sweater. It's very easy to do. It cuts the light off from the background. I don't have to pitch it so far towards the camera, but it does make it so that I can really make that background black so I get nothing on there whatsoever. Or I could start to, nope, that area of coverage is just too tight. It's not gonna allow me to light that background. But that's what I want when I put a grid on there. I really want it to narrow the area of coverage. So what's the difference between a large softbox and a small softbox? Well, I just happen to have my chopsticks here so I can show you exactly what the difference is. At six or eight feet, the area coverage of a small softbox is gonna be the same as a large softbox. But at the origin, a small softbox has a very small area of coverage, whereas a large softbox has a very large area of coverage. So as we get it in closer to our person's face and it gets into this three to four foot range, now the face is seen more with the large softbox. We see into the shadows on the right and left because the box is out here. Its origin is larger. Where it starts is larger and so it sees into the shadows. Whereas the small softbox, 
is smaller. Its origin is smaller. It doesn't see into the side. It doesn't see into the shadows as much, and so it's going to be harder. The shadows are going to be darker. So large, large softbox, small softbox. When they get out to six or eight feet, they cover the same area, but the origin is bigger with a small, with a large softbox, and smaller with a small softbox. So we get contrasty and hard light, soft and beautiful light. There's the difference between a small and a large softbox. So there's our larger softbox. Now when you put those two side by side, you can see that the smaller one is just, it's a little more contrasty in the shadows, and the larger one is a much less contrasty in the shadows. That's why people like these huge sources behind the camera, like you get a huge round octodome or you get a large softbox, because it just simply gives you this flat, soft light all the way around. So it does make Haley look prettier, but the issue is, what are you trying to communicate? What's the mood that you want in the image? If you want it to be soft and beautiful, use those large sources. If you want it to be hard and, and more gritty, then use those smaller sources. They, they communicate much differently. If you're in Sin City, you're not gonna use large, soft sources. It doesn't, doesn't match, it doesn't work. But if you're in Sense and Sensibility, then we have large, soft sources. You know, we have window light. We have light coming from everywhere because it's just soft and mushy. So it just depends on what you're trying to communicate. What is it you're trying to communicate? That's why you choose different sizes of soft boxes. We do critiques here once a month. I'll look at your images and give you some advice. We'll help you get the great images that you deserve to be making and taking. So keep those cameras rolling and... Keep on cooking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Squarespace, a great place to host your domain and put your website. Don't waste your energy on designing and working on your website. Spend your energy creating images, not websites. Squarespace is already taking care of that for you. Go to squarespace.com, free trial, no credit card needed. Make sure you subscribe to Slender Lens. We'll do amazing things like use chopsticks. <laughs>